Hello and welcome to the interview here on France 24. Our guest today is Mikhail Khodorkovsky. He was Russia's richest man before falling out with Vladimir Putin. He was accused of uh, tax evasion and spent 10 years in jail, an accusation he's always said was a political vendetta. He was freed in 2013. He lives in London where he founded the NGO Open Russia. Welcome to France 24. Hello. Why did Vladimir Putin launch this war in Ukraine? What is his goal? In 2014, Ukraine, after liberating itself from Viktor Yanukovych, who was a Putin vassal, deeply offended in the moral sense, Mr. Putin. And Putin felt that everything that has happened since then in Ukraine is due to meddling by the Americans in order to deprive him, Putin, of power. And during all these years, Putin sought to prevent Ukraine from becoming a full-fledged country. And at the present time, the reactions are emotional reactions. It's an emotional decision, which is due to the fact that he feels that the situation, from his standpoint, is not positive. You use the word emotional. We heard uh, officials in the West, especially Americans, question Vladimir Putin's mental health. Do you think that he has become irrational, or do you think, to the contrary, that he built this operation very cautiously, that he knew exactly what we was going to do? In medical terms, of course, not. He's not completely mad. Although there are some signs of um, senility, senile paranoia, and this is what we see when we see him sitting behind this extremely long table uh, where he meets uh, his guest, and he's afraid of being assassinated. However, even though in the clinical sense that's not incorrect, it has to be said that the operation was planned with many, many errors. And this is the problem faced by all authoritarian, authoritarian leaders, because 20 years on, these leaders are no longer able to perceive what is proper information. They're told that they are great and glorious, they, that they are making good decisions. And Putin was convinced that by coming in coming to Ukraine that he would be welcomed uh, as a liberator, uh, liberating the Ukrainian people from the Ukrainian uh, junta. So, from his standpoint, it's an unexpected welcome. Do you think he's making a historical mistake? Yes, definitely he's making a historical error, because he had a stable situation both uh, within Russia, and he could have been sitting on top of the pyramid of power until his death because people were not prepared to lose through a revolutionary situation and the people could not change the political situation through elections. Putin has deprived them of that possibility. At present, it's suicide. He cannot win in Ukraine. Even if he's able to capture uh, Kiev or Kharkov, and this has precipitated his doom. 
You really think this is the beginning of the end for Vladimir Putin? Of course, there are those sanctions that are much more crippling than he thought. But the question everyone is asking is whether the elites, the political, security, military elites, even the economic ones that are behind him, will abandon him and because they consider, without saying so, that he is making a fatal error. Well, of course, Russia has some experience, and it has experience of over 100 years. Clearly, in the event that he is unable to win in Ukraine, and in my view, he cannot win there. And after that, the regime itself will break up. It will not break up quickly. This will take anything from one to two years. And during that period, either Putin will close the borders completely and turn uh, Russia into an inward-looking country that will shift from the 21st to the 19th century, bringing about uh, economic uh, social collapse with the internal uh, contradictions with the neighboring republics coming out, and this will completely break up the country. Now, there's another scenario whereby it takes, it would take approximately two years uh, further to this military excess, and the word culminates in a revolution, and I think he's on that path. We have seen uh, demonstrations in Russia against the war. Uh, they were quickly arrested and uh, there was a repression. Some independent media uh, like the, the radio uh, Moscow Echoes and the newspaper Dost were closed. Is Vladimir Putin afraid that people in Russia will not accept this war and that could destabilize him, or do you think he firmly holds the reins of power? Well, without any doubt whatsoever, he acts instinctively and he acts sporadically. And this shows that he is afraid of a change in public opinion. Public opinion in Russia is supportive of the war against Ukraine because people say that this is not against the Ukrainian people. We are liberating the Ukrainian people from the Nazis, from the Bandera nationalists, and we don't have any losses whatsoever, therefore there's no bloodshed. And this uh, is the view of public opinion under the influence of uh, uh, propaganda. But this opinion, public opinion, will be destroyed through the influence of hard facts, and the hard facts will be coffins arriving in Russia. And the second thing that will change will be prices that the population will face, further to sanctions against Russia. And this will last for some time, several weeks, and Putin wants to slow this down by slowing down access to information. Why does he want to slow things down? Because if he ends the military campaign, he will launch his troops against the demonstrators because in order to counter the demonstrations, he has to take away resources from his campaign.
The jail opponent, Alexei Navalny, has called from his jail uh, Russians to demonstrate every day against the war in Ukraine. Do you support uh, that call, or do you think that this is not the right moment nor the right method to do so? Uh, I, I fully support this initiative, this proposal to demonstrate on the 6th of March uh, on uh, Sunday. I'm calling on all Russians to come out into the streets on the 6th of March in order to demonstrate against the war in Ukraine. I think that this will be a decisive factor in order to compel Putin to withdraw part of the troops which are killing Ukrainians. But will those demonstrating be able to demonstrate every day? That I cannot say. And I would be very happy if the potential were there as predicted by Navalny. Very last question. Do you fear a nuclear war? Well, one week ago, I would have laughed at that. However, now I can no longer laugh. I think that Putin is fully prepared to use tactical nuclear weapons. However, I suppose that he is not a fanatic who would launch an attack with nuclear weapons on a country which has a nuclear umbrella. I recall that the United States, Great Britain and Russia are the guarantors of the Budapest Protocol, which was the, the denial of a nuclear uh, status for Ukraine. And I think obligations under this status uh, will convince Putin that it's not necessary, nor is it worthwhile to wage the war. And the war will end in jail for him. And he will feel that it's not necessary to endanger the destiny of mankind to check whether the United States and Great Britain will fulfill their obligations under the um, Budapest um, Agreement. Mikhail Khodorkovsky, thank you very much for accepting our invitation here on France 24. Thank you all for watching this interview. Stay tuned for more news.